I'm Corey Johnson. This is Bloomberg West. Well, space is full of mysteries, including this one. A defense satellite mysteriously exploding in orbit last month. What happened? Investigators aren't telling us. NASA's not telling us. But now we have an expert in all things secretive in space, geographer and author of Blank Spots on the Map and artist Trevor Paglin and Academy Award winner for your cinematographer on, uh, on Citizen Four, one of a few. Yeah. Congratulations on that documentary about Edward Snowden. Um, you've done a lot of work in this area of sort of secret space satellites. Yeah. So I want to show you a patch. Okay. Uh, regular viewers of the show will, will notice my mug, which is a patch, which is a mug that you actually made, yeah. um, uh, which is there. But there's, I want to show you this patch, which I came to see first from you. This patch, NRO 39, it shows a, a, an octopus as John Stewart put it, it's sucking the face off of North America. What is that? Yeah, well, that is for that is a patch uh, made by an agency called the NRO. Uh, NRO L stands for National Reconnaissance Office Launch, and the National Reconnaissance Office is like the secret version of NASA. So the U.S. actually has two space programs: there's the public one, NASA, the space shuttle, Apollo, all that kind of stuff. There's another space agency that builds secret satellites. NASA builds a Hubble Space Telescope. The NRO builds other Hubble Space Telescopes, but they're pointed down at Earth. So they build classified reconnaissance satellites for themselves, and they serve the DIA, uh, the CIA, uh, the National Geospatial Intelligence, and they also build satellites for the NSA, Signals Intelligence Satellites. So the satellite that blew up a few weeks ago, we didn't know about a space debris heading towards the Earth, big secret. Nerds with telescopes saw it. Yeah, the so, didn't tell so what, what happened in early February is that a military weather satellite, and this is actually an Air Force satellite, called DMSP-13, Defense Meteorological Satellite Program Flight Number 13. It's a satellite that was launched in 1995. And in early February, something happened to it, and it looks like it exploded. And this was seen by an amateur astronomer in the UK, basically with a pair of binoculars. And he wrote on a listserv saying, I think this thing blew up. There's a couple of pieces of debris. Um, about 20 days later, I think the Air Force finally fessed up and confirmed that this thing had indeed exploded. Um, not really sure why, nobody's really saying, if anybody knows at all. Um, but it's actually not the first time that one of these DMSP spacecraft had um, blown up. There was another one, an earlier one called DMSP F-11, that something similar happened to in, in 2004. Interesting. So um, we've been doing a lot of coverage lately of, of SpaceX, Elon Musk's SpaceX, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, and the notion of a, a new space race, a private space race, and the business around it, uh, what is it going to be used for? Is it going to be used for, you know, 3D TV and new communication satellites? Is it going to be used for children, uh, children, you know, launching projects? Yeah. Real quick, um, is this what, what these satellite things are all about? Well, perhaps, but I'm, I'm always a skeptic when we're talking about civilian space programs because I don't think space pays for itself. I mean, the cost of building rockets and putting spacecraft in orbit is so high that without tremendous government subsidies, it's really not possible. So we, even when we're talking about civilian space companies, you know, you see the Elon Musk of the world very interested in military contracts. Trevor Paglin, thank you very much. Fascinating stuff. Thank you. I don't want to get to the All right, well, we're back. With talking about space with Trevor Paglin, an expert on the subject of, of the National Reconnaissance Office, um, this was a, this, the existence of this secret NASA program was a secret for a long time, yeah. um, and then it wasn't. Yeah, the the NRO was begun in 1960 um, when the U.S. first started really building spy satellites. They wanted to do it in secret, and its creation was really a compromise between the Air Force and the CIA, who wanted to, who were kind of fighting over uh, who would control secret uh, intelligence assets in space. So the NRAO was formed, and it, it existed for 30 years as a black agency. In other words, the existence of the agency itself was a secret, and that was true until 1992. If you were in the Air Force in the 1980s and you worked on spy satellites, you said the words National Reconnaissance Office in public, you would be breaking the law. Um, to this day, most everything that they do is secret, but the fact of the existence of the agency is no longer a secret. And the speculation is that the technology is much more advanced than NASA, but the size of the program is interesting. Uh, I want to read a quote from uh, uh, one of the generals who r ran the organization up, up until uh, recently, and, and specifically what he talked about is sort of the size of this agency, what they're going to last. He said is, they're undertaking probably the most aggressive launch schedule that this organization has undertaken in the last 25 years. Uh, and he went on to say there are a number of very large and very critical reconnaissance satellites that will go into orbit in the next year. Yeah. So these guys who have, or next year, year to year and a half, I should say. Yeah. Um, these, so these guys are not only 
launching satellites, but they're launching at a much more aggressive pace, spending probably billions of dollars? Yeah, absolutely. Historically, the NRO has actually had the largest budget of all the intelligence agencies, a larger budget than NASA, a larger budget than the CIA. That's no longer true. The CIA's budget has eclipsed them. And part of that is because it's just very, very expensive to put things in space. But it seems like there are a number of new NRO programs that have been going up in the last few years and that they're trying to put up um, looking forward. There's a new generation of synthetic aperture imaging satellites called Topaz. In fact, that was uh, the, the octopus patch that you showed was one of those. They're trying to build a new generation of photo imaging satellites. And of course, they're always uh, building and expanding the signals intelligence satellites that the NSA uses to uh, vacuum up uh, electronic signals. Yeah, so, so every Google search that you do on your, on your phone, is that the kind of stuff that the NSA is sucking up using the satellites launched by the NRO? To a certain extent, the, NI, the NSA does a lot of its uh, sensor uh, collection over fiber optic cables, right? So that, that's really where the bulk of the internet is, is in fiber optic cables moving you know, across the continent and under the seas. And that's something that NSA taps. They, but they have dedicated spacecraft for doing signals intelligence satellites. And that's typically what they'll do that for is uh, satellite phones in the Middle East, for example, would be a big thing that they wouldn't want to collect with those SIGINT birds. Um, also military communication. So the NSA doesn't just spy on you know n normal people they do that as well but they obviously their uh, other foreign governments militaries are a big target of them uh, really quick we're almost out of time um, a lot of a lot of private industry is probably benefiting from the spending of, yeah. of these billions of dollars going into these programs yeah absolutely and this is another thing that's a little bit odd about the NRO is that something like 95 percent of the entire organization is made out of contractors of places like Lockheed Boeing um, and so when we do that's another thing when we're talking about the idea of civilian space agencies well is, is Lockheed a civilian space agency is Boeing, is the NRO even itself. Interesting stuff. Blank spots on the map. Author Trevor Pagelin. Fascinating stuff. Can't wait to see your new art exhibit as well. Trevor Pagelin, we appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. I remember, you get the latest headlines all the time on your phone, your tablet, Bloomberg.com, and on Bloomberg Radio. We'll see you tomorrow Bloomberg West tomorrow.